Hello and welcome to the Portimer Podcast, episode 94. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? All right, before we get started on today's episode, I have to come clean. There was originally a different episode that was going to be here that I worked very hard on. Turns out, focusing a camera is very difficult. You don't say. <laughs> So at some point, you'll see a collecting Necrons video where I show off all of my Necrons, but you don't want to see the version that we had ready for this week. It's kind of funny in how bad it is, but uh, given that we have like decent equipment, it's just sad at a certain point. <laughs> Yeah, this is our brand new expensive fancy camera we bought, and I did great things with it. Yeah, it's understandable that like new thing, difficult to figure out, but uh, you really did make it as bad as possible from the final result. Yeah, but it's best to forget that now. And instead, let's talk about what every faction in 40k would want for Christmas. But this time it's 2023 instead of 2022 because I had to pull something out of my ass last second. Yeah, this should be fun though. It's always interesting and I mean, it's substantial different since 10th edition is here so yeah and to make it more interesting i banned us from actually watching last year's video so we can accidentally ask for the same thing twice but it'll be more interesting to go back and see what they wanted last year versus what they want this year right are you trying to say i won't remember what we talked about a year ago i don't and i'm the only one here that works between the two of us so <laughs> Hey, I vaguely remember that we did it. The only thing you remember is us arguing about the thumbnail for a whole day. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to see what we end up with on this one. It'll be better. That's the only guarantee. Without any further ado, though, let's jump into this disaster. Sounds good. All right, it's Christmas time. That means we start with the Imperium, right? They always get magical Christmas. All right, sure. I guess if we're going with the spoiled children first, let's just do Space Marines to get them out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they'll complain. Honestly, this one I wasn't sure about just because the Codex is new. Because what could they possibly ask for anymore? But you came up with an actual legitimately good suggestion. This will be topical because of the Christmas box that just came out. Space Marines would like a redo of the Outriders that don't go together like trash. Possibly, we could even wish for them to be redone as hover bikes so they actually match the rest of the Primaris range that's all hover tech. And for some reason, the bikes are McDonald's toys. I don't know, man. Gene Steeler cult decided they were just going to give Space Marine their tech. <laughs> Here, guys, you can use this. We'll take the hover bikes for our next release. <laughs> right? Like, no tradebacks. <laughs> exactly. Space Marines gave away their hover bikes at a white elephant party. <laughs> Yeah, the Outrider kits are really bad, though, so some type of fix to it shouldn't be too difficult, but yeah, it'd be cool if they just got a new aesthetic that was just better. I don't think we want to go too much into all of the chapters, and I don't think we did last time. Maybe we did. Luckily, there's no proof on what we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one can go back and just watch that video and tell us. Uh, so let's move on. Okay, I want to move on to Grey Knights because the obvious one is bring Psychic back. Yeah, I kind of banned us from that one because of it's what we're both going to wish for. Yeah, but I really want my hammers back. It doesn't have to be this like ubiquitous like let's change the whole line so we give everybody ham like just let me have the paladins have the hammers so that they can smash a tank. <laughs> it would do more to differentiate paladins from terminators too. Yes. Paladins and terminators feel like they should be substantially different and then you actually like play them and you're like eh, basically just a terminator. <laughs> With arguably a worse <laughs> spell. Yeah it's like a side grade kind of thing of like oh, maybe kind of like it's just weird, and I really like just having a big bonk hammer. And it's something Grey Knights is missing mechanically right now. It is. You really have trouble with anything large. Right, and previously we could fall back on anything being dealt with on Psychic, because like, hey, just smite a bitch. But Psychic's not in a great spot, so giving us hammers don't change things too drastically, but allow some still, hey, it's a Grey Knight Paladin they're kind of scary so that would be cool i don't think it would be too difficult to do either <laughs> All right, Custodes. I think there's only one wish that Custodes could reasonably want right now, and it would be to end the reign of Forge World. So, yes, and I think it's inevitable just because of, I mean, like, Forge World is dead. Yeah, and looking at the writing on the wall that's occurred over the last year of selling new Forge World plastic models and then ripping them out of 40k, and then combining the website into a single website that sells the crappy overpriced 
resin models next to the normal models with no warning of overpriced crappy resin models. Right. It feels like they're not long for this world and this is to clear out inventory before shuttering the garbage. Yes. And as much as it is good to finally get rid of it, like let's end that mistake. Custodes isn't a full army without it. They need something to fill in several holes. I'll agree, but it feels awkward saying that sentence knowing they still have a larger range than several other factions without Forge Worlds. Sure, I mean, that's very true, but just because others are worse off doesn't mean you're still not in a bad spot. <laughs> yeah, more than one person can have an issue. Yeah, and hopefully Custodes is able to get replacements before it's all gone. At least for the couple things that matter. Plastic Telamon, Plastic Contemptor Dreads, and then I guess Venatari. The rest really doesn't matter. They're just duplicates of existing things, but the resin version. And that's, I mean, I guess it'd probably be nice to have new ones, but... I like Gunstodes, but I don't know if they're worthy of a plastic kit, but I like them. Yeah, Telamon would be a massive hole to lose kind of thing. <laughs> Weirdly, it's like, I think mechanically the biggest hole would be the tanks, but I don't know anyone who's like, Custodes tanks, I love them. It's like, Custodes tanks, they were competitively viable for a while, so I suffered using them. Yeah, it's definitely not the aspect of the army that most people are excited by, but yeah, just Forge World needs to be finally put out of its misery, but Custodes needs something before that happens. All right, sisters. What do you have for sisters? Because other than a codex, I don't know what they want. Yeah, really, they need a codex, but I want them to really push the, like, martyr theme. Like, I mean, even where we're at right now with the index detachment, it feels kind of neat, but the way it has its restrictions just doesn't feel like it's actually this, the prayer has been answered, everything's fixed kind of feeling, where it's just like this one time you get this thing, but I don't know. I really want the martyr theme to be an army-wide wide, impactful kind of thing, but we need an updated codex and that gives options. Yeah, and it's fair. Sisters did just get more of their range last edition. They're mostly fleshed out as a faction at this point. There's a couple things that people could wishlist still, but like, it's really just, let's see what they've got for 10th edition. Yeah, they've got some nice key centerpiece models and they've got a solid theming. It's just, they need a bit more rules to actually let them flourish. If we're wishing for the moon, I think the only thing that I I'd like to see is like the classic meme moving castle centerpiece where you have like a cathedral on legs or on treads or something like an actual full ass church that just moves around and has cannons and stuff. That would be very cool. Yeah. Like exorcist, but Bane blade. Yes. I'm all aboard that train, but uh, I don't know if it's going to happen. So... <laughs> Let's move on to AdMech, though. All right. AdMech wants probably the exact same thing we said last year, which is more cult mechanica stuff, more robots, more interesting technology aspect that is not Imperial Guard with metal parts. Yeah, but we got uh, Tallboy now. We do have Tallboy, who I appreciate is interesting. He is silly, but I like that in AdMech. Yeah, I actually think it fits pretty well. I love the chicken walkers. That part is <laughs> yeah. good for Skatari so that you've got like, okay, you can play some real wacky shit but like I also prefer the cult mechanicus part there's also like the Castellan part <laughs> yeah I want more cool robot stuff yeah I hope that they have more of those models because at the moment the current range I'm just gonna be disappointed with the codex I can't think of enough interesting things that fits the Skitari army and it's worth noting we're recording this I believe the day before we see the codex yeah so I hope that there's more robots because it needs it all right so let's Let's move on to guard. For guard... More Acadians, more Acadians, more Acadians. <laughs> There's only one thing that I think a lot of people more would, Cadians. would get a lot out of, and that would be... More Cadians. And that would be reintroducing the other regiments, like <laughs> getting some Talarn models, some Vestroyans, I can't pronounce that one, Steel Legion. Krieg. Expanding whatever's <laughs> left to fill out Krieg so that you could swap out all of your characters with Krieg equivalents without having to dip into resin. Yeah, and I think that's something that is obvious and should be done, and yet they keep not doing it. 
it. <laughs> it's such an easy way to flavor them too. Like kill team like you did with Krieg to do the battle line units. Then you just need to make essentially your blister packs that you've been making for all of the space marines to do okay now you can have your tank commander be a Kriegsman's top half. Or the guy holding a flag you swap out his body with a Krieg body and have the rest be the flag. Like, yeah. And then you can sell different flags for each of the different regiments all that. And it doesn't have to be any real difference in rules other than you know detachment flavoring you just have your army outfitted the way you want like i said it seems obvious and a solid investment from a business side people would love it guard players want the ability to play their regiments that are not cadians i mean there's honestly some pretty cool stuff with guard as like an idea that isn't just cadians but let's talk about imperial knights and how agents of the imperium fix everything so i didn't want to have imperial knights and chaos knights wished for the same thing so i went different ways with the two wishes for them okay for imperial knights this one has been asked by both types of knight players before for something below the size of halverns or war dogs in chaos so that when you're playing a lower point total game it's not pick how many halverns or armagers you can fit in the list and then you're done you could have actual variety at lower points you could have like a knight and then some support unit type things yeah something like castellan robot sized but like not a billion points <laughs> Like, Chaos Knights can argue, like, eh, we can just splash in demons. Imperial Knights is like, I guess you could splash in Admech or Imperial Guard, but, like, not really. The real answer is Agents of the Imperium, but that's a joke. Don't do that. I think it's, like, there's possibilities there that could work. It's not there at the moment. Clearly, Agents of the Imperium are either fluffy and bad or... A problem for 10 minutes and then deleted. Yeah. So, you know, just the iteration of it just doesn't work. But I think there could be some thing that would allow imperial knights to be like oh you can just use these as chaos knights would use chaos demons but i think it would be kind of neat just to have especially for imperial knights it would be neat to have something smallish like the castellan size it'd be fun but let's move over to chaos we split the chaos knight to not just say you know smaller knights also i feel like it's less of an issue in chaos knights because when you're in chaos you can always just soup in demons to be your smaller thing it's definitely more problematic for imperial knights than the chaos knights but chaos knights just did want it if they could yeah you would still want to have the option internally in your faction if available but it's not the most important thing for chaos knights what would be nice for chaos knights to feel like because we always joke like it's imperial knights but with spikes <laughs> yes to help chaos knights feel less like an add-on to imperial knights it would be nice to have a little more flavor added to their boxes and to actually fully separate out the boxes so like the despoiler is not just taken in Imperial Knight, add some spikes to it. And also, because you can do the double gun loadout, you might have to go find on the secondary market an extra gun to put on it. So I think the Knight Abominant kind of shows you can do more. And like, I still want to see way crazier stuff than that. It can go way more than that. A proper despoiler kit that does not just say, go grab the basic knight kit. Yeah. Actually having huntsmen and executioners, which are armagers and halverns, be a unique box that is chaosified, and then making a despoiler box with double gun included in the box as an official supported thing with hopefully a little more wild design that's not just basic Questorus knight to really help play up that Chaos Knights is not just Imperial Knights with spikes. That would be very cool. So Chaos Demons, are we able to just do the split them into four? <laughs> Because that's the real thing. <laughs> Let's not do the thing we say every time. Okay, fine. Let's focus on actual other problems that Chaos Demons has because there are layers to it. All right. A big one for me would be, and this sounds very greedy, but it really needs to happen. It probably has to happen on the AOS side of things because 40k just doesn't invest in the demons. Well, I mean, that's kind of where I would want it anyways because AOS has cooler looking models. So let AOS do it and then 40k can just pick up the awesome models at a discount. <laughs> Yeah, but it would be every one of the mono gods is short like literally four to five units. That is to reach a minimum amount of units. The only one that like kind of gets away with it is corn. No, it's a terrible excuse. So like the current combat patrol is combat patrol corn, I joke. That combat patrol is the entire corn range, barring some characters. It's all there. That's your options. If you want to play corn, you are looking at every option on that box. It ain't much. The only reason 
reason I say it kind of works is because it does everything that corn wants. It just doesn't give you any options. You're doing corn's thing, but that's the only thing you can do. If you want a generic junk unit, it's blood letters. You want the step up from there, you have to go with blood crushers. You want the faster skirmish unit, you have to go with your dogs. That's just kind of how it works. There is no variety, and that's how it works for every single one of the gods. Like, some of them are worse off. Yes, corn has it the best just because you're able to do corn's thing, but like the other ones are real. Like, what the hell are we doing here with Zeech? Let alone Slanesh. Zeech, the god who should be celebrating change and uniqueness, has a whopping four or five kits. Are you trying to say that blue horrors and pink horrors are not different? <laughs> The worst part is blue and brimstone are in the same box. They're literally not different. <laughs> That's one box. I didn't know that. I mean, it makes sense. Because brimstones can't even be run solo anymore, but they were already part of the blue horror box. Fucking hell. <laughs> And you have to buy that box if you want to play Pink Horrors, because when you split, you have to turn into something. So either you have to get out some blank bases to be proxies for them, or you have to go get the Blue Horrors to get the ability to split. Ah, uh, yeah. It takes two boxes to build one unit. When you look at Chaos Demons, they have a decent number of units. Like if you just like look at the number of data sheets that exist, but then you have to split it in four and remove the named characters that are well over half of it. So it really does mean that each god needs four or five is not an unreasonable number no it would give us basically one option for every type of unit yeah that would be nice if they had more units per god yeah and again that's without getting into like an undivided unit we used to have furies they got removed from the game right after getting a kit that you could go buy why <laughs> This unit that is famously attached to Bellicor lore-wise. We have released a unit for it. We have released Bellicor. We have removed the unit. <laughs> I'm aware that's more on the fantasy AOS side of things for the Furies being related to Bellicor, but like, it's very stupid that like, it was all here. We could have done something with Bellicor. Yeah, but AOS is where demons get a lot of their stuff just because they do it better. And demons are better respected in the lore of AOS than they are in 40k, which isn't saying much, but it is something. Yeah, it's just not a good excuse to be like, oh, AOS is responsible for making that link. And it's like, well, sure, but if they don't do it 40 k sure as hell won't and the one time they tried we got the ugliest model in demons out of the deal so let's not make another soul grinder <laughs> no more cooking you stay out of the fucking kitchen whoever made that you're fucking done <laughs> oh god damn, i forgot about that yeah all right let's move on to chaos space marines <laughs> So, obviously, EC within Chaos Space Marines could ask to be finally pulled out into their own faction. They'll probably get it by the end of the edition. I mean, if they don't, we've misunderstood every sign that GW's been telling us, so... But ignoring that, and it's not going to happen this year, it'll be an end of edition type deal. Yeah. Uh, and it'll be half of a release. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But I would say the Night Lord kill team upgrade sprue thing they just showed off is perfect. We just need that for the other legions. Okay. The ability to flavorify for your correct legion. It's very true when Chaos Space Ring players complain about, I hate that if you're undivided, you are stuck playing Black Legion painted differently. Because Iron Warrior units should not look like Black Legion units. I can totally get behind that. And especially for Chaos Space Marines, there's such a extreme difference between them kind of thing whereas like regular space marines switch the paint call it good <laughs> we can joke about that but like they're part of a unified organized yeah it's a cohesive thing chaos space marines is very much not this oh we're all happy and cohesive and we get along yeah you have a bunch of wildly different factions that are grouped under not the imperium and even on that angle you have like people dealing with 10,000 years of trying to upkeep old equipment or having the dark mechanicus make up new equipment for them yeah all while they're actually literally insane many of them yes <laughs> yeah i mean it just chaos space marines getting upgrade sprues can actually do a lot to the flavor and yeah i mean that what they showed off just what was that last week or whatever that was super cool looking yeah when those got shown off i was like damn i don't even like night lords in that suite <laughs> right 
<laughs> it's one of those just like, huh, that's pretty cool. Could do some stuff with that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it would be very cool to see that continued to the other ones. All right, world eaters. They want the other half of their range. Yeah, basically. All right. And uh, leagues of Otan. They want the other half of their range. Did the leagues of Otan just invade the Eye of Terror to make that editing joke? You know what? They'll do what they have to do to get their other half of the range. <laughs> Yeah, so both of them got pretty half-assed releases at the end of last edition. Votan at least had an expectation of like, okay, yeah, it's not everything. We'll get the rest later. This is a whole new idea. They're trying to figure things out still. World Leaders, they were just like, nah, we're just going to take some stuff away. Yeah, World Leaders definitely got the worst end of that deal. <laughs> it's pretty offensive for World Leaders. But either way, both of them, it's not even that they want it. They need the other half of their ranges. I honestly think World Leaders will be amazing when they have it. They will feel really cool if they just had their unique Terminators, if they had access to things they lost when they stopped being CSM. It's all set up. Just put a squad of Berserkers on Skull Crushers and make that a different unit. So you've got a heavy cavalry unit. There are so many easy, you already have the files, just combine them in your 3D modeling software. Yeah, the ideas are all there. They just need to actually do it. So those two, or leaders and Votan, just need the rest of their army range. So Thousand Sons though, Brad. And you don't get to say shit about Give Psychic back. Fuck off. I'm not going to say Give Psychic back, but we're all thinking it. <laughs> I would like more variety of units for the faction. It's kind of aging poorly next to how much better Death Guard looks. Like, Death Guard's got problems. But it's very clear that Thousand Sons was the unique prototype for the <laughs> God Legions. Yeah. It'd be nice to get a disc unit, a melee Kopesh blender unit, which is a thing even in 30k, some heavy support that's not just stolen from CSM and is Thousand Sun specific. It's minor stuff. Psychic Dread, Psychic Dread where? Psychic Dread? <laughs> Can I get a Psychic Dread? <laughs> psychic Dread? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm waiting for the uh, Forge World Psychic Dread right before Forge World is finally killed. Blood Angels, why did you steal my Psychic Dread? Uh, yeah, I think Thousand Sons honestly does have a pretty small range. And it was easy to ignore in ninth because you got to customize so much. I would say it still wasn't easy to ignore. We knew throughout ninth that my lists were pretty much, you have to run these units because of how cabal points work and you can't use certain types of units because they don't generate cabal points and you lose out on your army rule which is so much of your power oh yeah there were problems even in ninth but with 10th, you lost one of the only boons we had, which is, sure, we've got no range, but you can spend an hour and a half kidding out a character. You can do so many different builds on characters, and those characters mean so much that each individual army feels different. Yeah, assuming you're not just trying to min-max the most damage per point or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's always going to be, like... Yeah, yeah. In the vast majority of cases, you had a lot going on there to hide your problems. We don't have that now. No, so it becomes more and more obvious of the, oh, Thousand Sons really doesn't have that many options to make custom lists. I do think Thousand Sons has the extra issue, which is why I wonder if we haven't seen any real expansion other than, like, token character. It was the 7th edition release, next to Old Marines, pre-Primaris. <laughs> when you put my Thousand Sons models next to Primaris Marines, it's sad. I mean, it fits in with Grey Knights. Yeah, and that's kind of the problem, is like... <laughs> Yeah. There's the extra issue. This gets into like a manufacturing issue. A little bit deep in the weeds here, but you cannot ask for why didn't they just add five rubrics to this box? Because it's old marine sprues where you either have 10 or zero, like the legs and the guns are on separate sprues. So you end up with, you can build half of 10 marines or you can build all of 10 marines if you put both sprues in. Yeah. And you're not going to redesign the sprue layout. At that point, you are putting your money in into a redesign. Yeah. So I have a feeling that when Thousand Suns does get a range update, it's going to come with polishing up their actual current range to be slightly larger in size, less stiff old marine pose where it's just man holding gun across chest. I feel like because they are a more elite style army, there's no reason that they shouldn't deserve that. It would be nice, but I have a feeling that because of that, it's not realistic. It's true. So I'd rather we just get the new units in the proper sizing with the nice design to it and just know in the back of our heads that like we're going to be wishing for a rubric and SOT upgrade in a few years here. Yeah, and you'll just have to deal with kit bashing until then. Yeah, because you can't really release Thousand Suns again right now because it's going to feel extra bad. 
to yeah. like EC who's not out yet or world leaders who are half out. Yeah, that would be hilarious though. But like they still need it. It has to be in the pipeline. But for a more realistic wish, it would be melee Kopash unit, psychic dread, psychic dread, psychic dread, some type of disc unit that's not a character. Maybe rubrics that are riding screamers, which is discs are made of screamers who are elevated. Yeah, sure they are. Which is kind of hilarious. It's like, congratulations, you did such a good job, screamer. I'm turning you into this in and I'm an object. <laughs> You no longer need to feel. <laughs> but you still will, because it's funny. <laughs> right. Okay, let's uh, round this off with Death Guard. Honestly, not a terrible range at the moment. They just need to solidify what Death Guard's trying to do on the board. Yeah, a codex with a more fleshed out plan for what Death Guard is. A more permanent fix than the current Band-Aid. They really need to put together what Death Guard's going to be from now on kind of thing. Like, is it going to be what we're currently looking at of like, you know, spreading the rot kind of thing? Thing. Or are you going to go back to, oh, it's just a DR tough guy kind of thing? But they already kept that because they're still plus one toughness. It's not good, but like that didn't go away. It's just not the focus anymore. Right. So I expect that the Codex will do it. Whatever happens, the Codex will solidify where things are trying to go. Whether that's good or bad, we'll see, I guess. All right. Well, let's move out to uh, the Xenos. Sure. Let's do all Dari. So I would say replaced by Exodites and Harlequins because they're much more interesting as a fa- Oh, that's my wish. Yeah, that's not going to happen. See uh, Harlequin section. <laughs> oh, it's painful. Yeah. So Eldari, I would say a real wish for them would be the rest of the Aspect Warriors getting a range update to Modern Sculpts, probably through Kill Team, most realistically. Or maybe they get a Codex and they get the rest of the Sculpts there. But I'm going to bet it just gets slowly trickled out through kill teams over the next year or two. I think that would be fine, but there are definitely some pretty old Eldari models that... Okay, can we get some Phoenix Lord updates when we get the Codex? Because, <laughs> uh... <laughs> Some of you don't look so fresh. <laughs> They've had a hard life, Brad. They're uh, constantly worried about their soul being taken, and it shows. Some of these scalps have 401ks that are doing better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong. There's some old ass fucking sculpts in that range. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of options for Eldari. So there's definitely things that would be interesting to have new, but they could spend some time fixing and uh, updating some of the old ones. All right. Do you want to talk about your Drukari? Yeah, this one obviously just came up two days ago or yesterday on a Warcom thing. But GW is aware that the One Piece boat may have been a bad idea. So hopefully we do get our Christmas wish. by bad idea you mean it was amazing right everybody loves the boat the only faction under 45 percent win rate in their statistics that are loaded <laughs> yeah they couldn't even lie enough to make drukari sound good that's true yeah i'd like to see drukari's rules reevaluated. they'll probably just get band-aided for now until they get a proper codex but i'd like to see them embrace the tri-prong nature of the army and actually let them breathe not get stuck to a terrible idea of a sub-faction for the next god knows how long i mean so embrace the tri-prong nature you mean give each prong each section its full support as opposed to trying to force them to be happy together yeah or just don't make the rules explicitly say you must try running all of them at once like i'm not saying that we have to have three sub factions right now it'd be nice but i'm not <laughs> saying we need it right now we just need the sub faction that we have access to to be more applicable to all of them and not a third of a sub faction that they're all stuck in it's more like a fourth because then there's the like awkward all three of you must be in this exact scenario for this to even happen yeah it it is weird. I see no reason this issue won't be solved with the Codex. <laughs> it likely will get a band-aid fix for now. They're aware of the problems and then we just have to wait for the Codex and hope it's next year and not the year after. Yeah, and I think that's the real wish is get a small fix now so that you can actually have options to play for the next year and a half. Yeah. Uh, and the Harlequins would like to exist again. We can move on. Yeah, they really would. Alright, Necron. 
guns. We are just getting a codex that, again, we haven't seen yet, but we'll see what we wish for after that. For now, the easy one, though, is that Nightbringer that we all knew was coming for the last year, and then lol, no, that wasn't the Nightbringer. How could you fools be so foolish and expect us to actually fix up the Nightbringer? It's a useless foot character model. Yeah. We needed another generic character in Necrons. We don't have enough of those. <laughs> I need the Hyper Super Lord now. Can we just have a Nightbringer who doesn't have a scythe that looks like it's about to snap off if the breeze goes the wrong way? Or Deceiver who is not Banana Man? Or Transcendent Catan that doesn't require you to build an obelisk? It'd be nice to update all of the Catans to be more Void Dragon-esque. I'm fully on board of that because I think the Void Dragon's really cool. It's one of my favorite models. And then I look at the other Catans and <laughs> it's... it's you think you got a bad? I was putting him on the turntable for the abandoned episode. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't put them together. Don't put them together on the same table. <laughs> My Void Dragon is still in pieces where he has been for many years, which will be part of that episode, which we will talk about. But he is still pinned for painting. I just put the pinned pieces close together, laying on top of each other, and it still is the most impressive of the bunch. <laughs> it, like, it's a really cool sculpt. It, it honestly is. And the Catan, they have such a, an interesting, unique idea behind them that it's not an easy sculpt to produce, to have you know the modeler think of how to do the katans it's not an easy task but uh they should still do it <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I misunderstand how it works on the back end. I feel like getting told design the new fancy centerpiece yeah. is a way more fun project than sit there and pound out another Primera Space Marine unit that looks the same as the last 35. But this one has a different sigil on its shoulder pad, so it has a three up invul once per game. I mean, I feel like I'd be more interested in making the Kata. I mean, it's a lot more work. So maybe it's just one of those where it's like, nah, I'm good with the Space Marine. I'll be out by lunch. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that would be nice to have Necrons get that updated. All right. Do we want to do yours, you know, so if we're done with mine? Yeah, orcs. Um, they're in a reasonably good spot. The army rule's not terrible and all that. It'd be nice if, you know, when the Codex comes out, we actually get some sub-faction rules for like the Green Tide and some like honest good DACA. But I'm fine with what we have. It'll be okay. Ask for what you actually want to ask for. I know what you want. Can planes not be true? trash yeah it's very personal to you this is supposed to be the orc wish and this is more the you wish but i understand guess what the coolest fucking planes that exist in 40k are orcs models so that's not an opinion that is fact I like the croissant, but I'll give it to you. And I don't want them to be too strong. That's not where I want to go, because then they're going to get nerfed again. I want them to just be playable. They're not playable right now. Planes are not fucking usable. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little personal, but I'll let you get away with it because it is something that a lot of factions could get behind. I'm sure a lot of people out there own a plane that they have to get out a makeup brush just to get all the dust off it before they put it on the table. Well, no, like that's the thing is I don't want them to be so strong that they become like they were of, oh, you're just taking planes, right? That's the right choice. I want them to be a, oh, that's a fun little thing that you added to the list. That'll be cool. And uh, yeah, right now it's just my Minus 200 points, you have a nice piece of art on the table. Sometimes. On, on the side of the table for most <laughs> of the game, and then it comes on and, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a personal one but like i said orcs are not in a terrible spot we can move on all right let's talk tau this one is not personal to me but it is one that has been mentioned by tau players who are of wrong opinions but i can get behind <laughs> i was like uh it's just uh more gundams right i would vote that <laughs> but realistically it is true tau's most underrepresented and most abandoned aspect is one of its most interesting which is the combined arms, multiple species working together for the greater good aspect, the Crute, the Vespid, your auxiliary races. Yeah, basically everybody else. Which, it's a fair point that while it's not why most people think Tau look cool 
on the board. It's a part of their lore that is underrepresented and could be made cool. Oh, it could be made very cool. Honestly, there's a lot of abilities to non-humanoids that could get some really cool lore, some really, really cool sculpts. Calm down, Eric. This is 40k. It's going to be human, but slightly distorted. I know, but we just need Tao to exist in AOS. <laughs> Unleash them in AOS somehow. But if we're dealing with the auxiliary races, I would say an interesting way to handle it. Instead of trying to expand Crute or expand Vespid into like 10 units, it would be interesting to instead solidify another three, four different races, have a unit for each of them that handles something wildly unique. And then make the actual like combination of all of those be the not Gundam section. Right. They're very unique sub pieces that combined make for a pleasant to look at combined arms, the power of the individual types all sitting out there. And then you can use that as a jumping off point to like build up some more Tau lore outside of, you know, the basic septs and like building on the other races of the Tau Empire, then start adding in when they get popular in some way, start adding in more for those parts, build up from there until Tau feels like a real full thing that's not a one-off. I think that would be a great way of doing it. You know, it really would flesh out that section, but it also wouldn't do it in such a, well, you've got Gundam's recruit, choose one. That would be a bit weird, and I feel like you'd still be missing a good portion of the interesting aspects to Tao. Yeah, I always imagine, like, how cool it would be to get to play the Covenant. <laughs> Yes. Grunts, jackals, elites. It's so neat to see what Tau is lore-wise, and then, like, you get to gameplay and it's like, we got Gundams. We forgot to bring everybody else to the party. Which, love Gundams. I'm all aboard more Gundams. Gundams are cool, but... And if Tau became big enough to, like, be an Imperium-like, it's the part that I would be in. Absolutely. But I would be okay if it was Imperium-like, where you felt like, wow, the Tau Empire is something interesting and three-dimensional. There's a hundred and 20 data sheets. <laughs> over several factions within this super faction. Yeah, but we're not there. You bring up Covenant and that would be a great way of showing off like they can be distinct and different and yet still have a visualization that works well together. Like the combined arms that you were saying, like it makes sense that they all are working together. Find a through line in the design to give them all so that it feels like, okay, this is all Tau Empire, but you are seeing how everyone brings brings their own thing to the table. Yeah, that would be a fun way of doing it. All right, so Tyranids. They've got a really good setup right now. A decent codex, a beautiful range refresh, but I'd say the thing that Tyranids want most at this point is probably just proper lore. I am not somebody that's a huge lore fan. I read some stuff here and there. I listen to you babble about it every once in a while, but... Uh... We'll get into a really good discussion in an episode soon about Vorthos versus Melvin. I mean, that's one that I've been wanting to do for a while now. We debated just skipping to this one before doing Timmy, Johnny, and Spike. But even I want proper Tyranid lore, like actual, like, from a part of the hive mind or, you know, something that actually explains what's going on with Tyranid. Yeah, there are some little snippets in current books. And I know there's apparently some new short story that I've got to go find online somewhere, but it would be nice to have an equivalent to what the Infinite and the Divine and Twice Dead King did for Necron's last edition. Just like a solid book or two. That's all we need so that Tyranid players can be told, hey, go read these two books. There ain't much else for you, but they're really solid. They make you want to actually play the Tyranids and say that this is correct. I am the only organism. This is a bunch of just fruit in a tree for me to eat. And it also gives some hope to like, oh, they won't just be a one-off. They did well. It's a good book. Maybe they'll make more of them in the future at some point. Yeah, it's just, it's difficult to write and I don't know how they'll go about it. Sure, but there are books that have existed that do similar things. There's other sci-fi that's done the idea of hive minds. Just steal from Starcraft and have the hive mind get slightly shattered so that we have sub-characters within the hive mind arguing. Just enough 
five of them four of them even right and then you get the like yeah they're all still part of the same hive mind and they're all working together but like they've got their own little individualism to it in a weird way so there's ways of doing it i actually feel like the phyrexians do that somewhat well i know i'm giving magic lore a lot here yeah let's hear about the magic lore again brad you love that absolute top tier lore that definitely gw should take a look at and replicate It is an aspect of the magic lord that is not complete trash of the different praetors all being part of the same Phyrexian hive mind, but having their own individual portion of it they represent and how they don't always interact with each other perfectly. 40k has dipped its toe in as light as possible to do it. I do want to go check out that new short story and hopefully we get more. I can understand the hesitation from a business side of like, this is a risky adventure. If we do it wrong, people will hate it but this is gw they retcon their lore every third book anyway who cares you just stumble and then move on and do it again until you get one that's popular and then you act like that's all you had the whole time yeah and then you capitalize on that and continue it yeah so yeah it's here into the lore would be fascinating to get some stuff out of so ending on gene stealer cults i'd say there's not too much going on other than a couple more non-character units would be nice yeah alternatively they could release some good holiday box or something like that and make it affordable. Honestly, Gene Stealers, the Combat Patrol is so very good right now that Gene Stealers is temporarily affordable. If you like them, get the current Combat Patrol before it goes away. Yeah, before it goes away is the problem. Because uh, if that goes away, Gene Stealers may be Admech tier again. Yep. But I would like to see some more of their vehicle stuff just because it's very orky. <laughs> The ramshackle nature of the army is an interesting aspect to it. Yeah. I know that there's the joke of every Necromunda kit is also a gene sealer kit, and I abuse that in the pile of gene sealers I've got growing on the table at my brother's house. It is very true, yeah. But, like, more official, actual rules for gene stealer stuff. I want forklift certified gene stealers. I'm on board. Okay. The wish is for forklift certified gene stealers. That's all I want for Christmas. <laughs> Uh, Ricky, get it on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Available now at Orchid 8. <laughs> 15% off right now. I did the thing. Go to our merch store. Boom. I did it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> We're so good at this. We can even put up a picture right now on the YouTube video of the new zip up hoodie because now the actual hoodie is out so we can use a picture of it this time. Oh man, so much planning. We're so good. Yeah, it is actually out and you should buy it. That's how selling stuff works, right? You just tell them that they should do it and they do it. <laughs> yeah, just like when you tell them to do the YouTube pleasantries, which they're definitely doing right now because I said it. I mean, there's no more hidden factions, right? We're done now? No, no, no. We're good. Thank you for sticking around. Unironically, Orchid 8 does currently have a sale on orders of 100 bucks or more for 15% off. I do recommend making use of that because there is sweet merch we have. I currently have our own objective markers on their way to me. Very excited for that. But enough of that, though. Let's get out of here for the week. Sounds good. Sounds good.